Life can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost, one that has faith in God's power no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world. Good morning and happy Lord's Day to the members of the body of Christ and to all those who are searching for God in their lives. My name is Elmer Simley III. I'm the minister here at the Woodlawn Park Church of Christ. We welcome you to another uh, excellent opportunity to worship our great God and, and Father in a worship service which is designed to teach, encourage, and motivate you to build you up in faith and hopefully in your relationship with our great Father and God. We are going to start our service with a song from our illustrious minister of music who is back with us and off from quarantine, or out of quarantine, and we just welcome him back, uh, Brother Lamar Robinson. We hope you have your devices ready, your pens, pencils, paper, and Bible, because today is going to be an awesome day in the Lord. Let us stand for the opening selection, Brother Robinson. Amen, amen. Just to be clear, no COVID here. Amen, amen. 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 Just want to be clear. Want to be clear. I travel. Just want to follow the protocol. We're going to say, "Are you my all in all?" It's good to see everybody on this morning. God bless you, man. Keep you uh, all at this time. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who worthy is your name. Oh! 
Okay, let's thank uh, Brother Lamar for that opening hymn, and it's good to see that he's back Amen. with us. Um, truly a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It is always the, when we have the opportunity to go before God, no matter what we're dealing with or where we are in life, it's truly a blessing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this opportunity to be in front of you. We thank you for all things that, all the blessings and all the trials that you gave us um, from last week to this week, to this day. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you right now to continue to bless our speaker. Um, Lord, uh, as he continues on his, this journey of the Sweet 16, these men of valor that we're covering, um, just continue to anoint him. Bless all that made it here today. Bless all that wanted to be here today. And please bless those that are streaming uh, live with us on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Just be with us um, as we go through this worship service, these things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we're not going to prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, uh, which will eventually transition into the offering of the morning. We're going to sing as the leader. We'll sing first verse and second verse uh, of the song this time. As the deer panted for the waters of my soul, Lord, have to you. of our service, which is communion. And as we go through this communion, let us reflect on the sacrifice that was made by our Lord and Savior. I'll be reading from 1 Peter, chapter number 2, starting at verse number 21. For even hereunto were you call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was gall found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it is your grace and it is an honor to partake in this communion that represents your broken body and shed blood. We pray, Heavenly Father, at this time that we 
will have the mindset to serve you righteously and in an acceptable way. Be with us now forevermore, that Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us now partake in the communion. As we transition to the offering part of the service, we are reminded that this, that giving is an important act of worship in which we are commanded to partake. And God has blessed us with a number of opportunities to participate in this offering. I'll be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, starting at verse number 6. For this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. The methods that we have to give are such. We can download the PushPay app and give that way. There is an online way to give and to go to woodlawnpark.org. There's also a way of giving through mobile text. Uh, text Woodlawn Give at 77977. You can download apps from either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and type in Woodlawn Park. Church of Christ. You can give through mail. The address is Woodlawn Park, COFC, P.O. Box 47248, Baltimore, Maryland, 21244. And for those who are in our worship presently, you can give and there is a place that you can give your offering. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we recognize that in you we have an abundance of life. We recognize that you protect your own and that you provide for us all the things that we need. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we will remember this during these troubling times and that we are able to give back a portion that you so richly bless us with. Continue to be with us now and forevermore. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. Let us all stand at this time. We're stand. Let's stand. Uh, and then after this, we'll have a scripture reading and prayer for the morning. We'll transition right into the man of the hour uh, to give us the word of life. And we're going to sing a song called A Beautiful City. A Beautiful City. We'll sing the uh, first portion of that twice. Uh, we're unfamiliar with the song, so we become familiar with the song. And we'll transition to the verse. Let us sing. Tell me, have you heard of a beautiful city? Away. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Tell me how you heard of 
today's scripture reading. If you would turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. And again, that's Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. And the Bible reads, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. And again, that comes from Genesis chapter 45, verse 5. If you would uh, bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together for another wonderful morning in your glory. Lord, fill us with your wisdom, your uh, blessings, and just continue to guide us, Lord, each and every day. Yes. If you would uh, please bless the speaker, that is where fills our minds, our hearts, and opens up our soul, Lord. Yes. Please bless those that are watching online and those on the way to the building as well, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good job, my brother. God bless you. Uh, let us all stand at this time as we get ready to welcome the man, Sir Brother Sibley, uh, to come forward to give us the bread of life. And let's show some love. Clap now for the media team. They're doing a good job. Baby. Amen. <laughs> Uh, we're going to say Jesus is coming soon. We'll sing all three verses. Uh, the song is good to be back. Amen. It's good to be back, refreshed, renewed, to see all uh, these beautiful faces that are sitting out with us. we got some folks at this time. I don't know if send me a little on that a little later. I have lost some loved ones. You never know. Amen. You never know when is your time. But be mindful that he's, he's returning. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming back, and we got to be ready. we got to be ready. Uh, we're going to say Jesus is coming soon. Troublesome times are here, feeling as a heart filled with fear. Freedom we are, oh dear, when I was at stake. Jesus is coming. 
day and wonderful opportunity that God has set before us to come together to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we are coming together, of course, by different means. Some of you are, in fact, right in front of me, and I appreciate that. And some of you are right there in cyberspace, right online, ready to worship your God in spirit and in truth. And I appreciate uh, that as well. Welcome again to another worship at the Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, where we believe and that we are real people with real problems and real solutions in Christ. Christ has the answer. God has the answer in his word for any issue, any problem that you may be experiencing, any heartache, any uh, discomfort, God has an answer. I appreciate the prayer, the opening. First of all, I appreciate the devotional part of the service and uh, the singing. And I also appreciate the opening prayer by our brother um, Logan. And brother Logan said something that is very applicable to the lesson today and important uh, as a spiritual principle. He said, uh, quote, that uh, thank, he was thanking God for not only the blessings that we've had through the past week, but also he thanked God for the trials. You see, because the Bible teaches us uh, the trials that we encounter have a purpose, and God can use these things to a greater 
a good and a greater purpose. He says in uh, the Bible, in Romans, the fifth chapter, and I know the media team does not have that, but we can go through that. Media, uh, the, uh, the Romans, the fifth chapter, verse number one through five, he says, therefore, having been justified by faith, he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, through whom, in verse two, also, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. He says, and we rejoice, he says, in the hope of the glory of God. He says, not only that in verse number three, but we also glory, glory, we glory in tribulation. Knowing that trials, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character, hope. And he says in verse number five, now hope does not disappoint us because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And my friends, the character that we're going to look at from the uh, Sweet 16 Old Testament series is uh, just embodies this principle. He embodies it. He, he embodies the trials and the sufferings. But God developed a unique spiritual character within this gentleman. And we're going to talk about him in part B of our Joseph Accept the Wrong title series. So, but before we get that, y'all thought I forgot. Y'all had homework. You got homework every week, and you thought I forgot it. And you got 16, 16 Old Testament uh, characters in order, and we're going to look at them uh, right now. We're going to ask, is there a volunteer? Is there a volunteer that, oh, we do have a volunteer over in the corner. We have a mic that can get over there real quick because we're going to start with our, our slide. A, uh, a, 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 that's right. Okay, let's get a mic over there real quick. All right, now you tell us your name. Tell us your name. Tell us your name because I can't pronounce it. What is it? My name is Lydia. Oh, it's Lydia. Yes. Oh, I can pronounce that. <laughs> That's right, Lydia. That's right. I'm going to say it that way from now on. Oh, yeah. That's right. I love it. I love it. That's right. Okay. All right. So, A. Adam. In. Noah. A. Abraham. Joseph. J All right, Joseph. All right. Joseph. Wait a minute. Hold on. We got to do it for the people at home. M. Okay. Moses. J. Joshua. G. Gideon. S. Samuel. All right, S. Saul. D. David. S. Solomon. That's right, E. Ezekiel. Ezekiel, right, I. Okay. You Isaiah. said Isaiah. Isaiah, J. Jeremiah. D. Daniel. And N. Nehemiah. There you go, there you go, beautiful. Beautiful, absolutely wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we, we appreciate that, and we've had fun with that during this series. Uh, I think next week is going to be our last installment of this series, and it, uh, it's going to come by way of a lesson from our brother, Brother Bland. Brother Bland is going to, next week, uh, end the series on, um, on and he's going to look at the character of Joshua. Joshua. So we uh, have fun, and we're gonna. Have, the next series is gonna be just as fun. I hope you have learned something through this series. But today we're going to do part B of Joseph. Part B of Joseph, and uh, we we've been talking about. Um, uh, last week we talked about Joseph, and I, I, I'm, I'm just going to put out there how much you picked up of last week's uh, sermon. Now Joseph is what number of uh, what line or what number of sons was he? Um, uh, did he uh, was he in line with his parents? Do y'all remember what line? Huh? 
11th. And at that time, uh, when Joseph was home, he was the 11th of 12 sons. There were not, I don't believe, 12 at that time because Benjamin uh, came along a little bit later. But anyway, uh, Joseph was 11th of 12 sons. Uh, his father was Jacob. And the Bible tells us in chapter number 37 of Genesis, uh, the 37th chapter, it tells us around verse uh, number 1 through 5, it tells us that Jacob uh, loved, Jacob loved Joseph. He loved him. He loved him. And, and um, Jacob, Jacob loved Joseph for a number of reasons. Uh, one was because Jacob loved Rachel, and Rachel was his favorite. And I told you we're not going to get into that this week, uh, but, but J Rachel was his favorite. And uh, he had uh, Joseph, and uh, he loved him. And so much so, so much so, that he made the other children jealous. And everybody else, that when, you get, when you have ten brothers and all of them hate you, then you know that was some problem in the house. It was some issues. And uh, so they did not like Joseph at, at, at all, but uh, they hated him. And eventually this led to them, uh, if we could put the, the slide up, uh, the timeline of Joseph's life, uh, by, he was, by the time he became 17 years old, 17 years old, they sold him as a slave to the Ishmaelites who had a caravan coming through the desert. And they sold their brother as a slave. Now, I know some of you have had some family problems. We all have family problems and little arguments here and there. And, you know, you tell your sisters and uncles and uh, even Trump has family problems. But anyway, we, we want to realize that this is a, a real family problem. It's a real issue. Can you imagine how Joseph felt, first of all, when they, when they saw him coming? The Bible says in chapter 39 of, of Genesis, when they saw him coming, they said, let's kill him. But then one of the brothers said, you know, no, 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 we, we can't kill him. He's our brother. Now, can you imagine that? We, we can't kill him. We're just going to throw him down into a pit, and when, um, and we're just going to let him stay there. But that's not even um, the worst of it. Can you imagine when the Ishmaelites came by? They pulled him up out of the pit. And he could see his brothers, and they are selling him to a caravan. How would that make you think him feel? What do you think? And this is in Genesis, the 37th chapter, and verse number 28. Then the Midianite traders passed by, so the brothers pulled Joseph out up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites. For 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Okay. 
So in context, in what we're going to do, and in application to this lesson, I want you to think about maybe some of the issues and problems uh, that you may have with people and with others and with family. And the principles that we're going to learn from this lesson through Joseph's example, which really relates to Christ, because they did the same thing to Christ, we did the same thing. The Bible even teaches when, when, we, when we go astray and when we err, we, we kind of like uh, crucify, the Bible says, Christ all over again because we know what we are doing and we have confessed Christ and we are in the body of Christ, and, but yet we still do what we want to do irregardless of the sufferings of Christ. But I want us to learn that we can learn how and the spiritual principle, and which is our title for this morning, is accept some wrong. Joseph is a, a person that many of us can identify with because in trying to live for God, and we get into our text. Our text is going to be out of Genesis, the 45th chapter, if you can turn there. Genesis 45. But if you can identify, you can identify with because in trying to live for God, he was confronted with many trying situations. But by God's grace and Joseph's faith and obedience, he was able to turn the evil of mankind, of people, of situation, in situation. He was able to turn evil into good. That's a spiritual blessing, a spiritual principle. This is in line with Romans 8, 28. And in Romans 8, 28, it, it says what? What is it? For all things work together, what? For good. To, he says all things has the potential, the possibility to work together for good to them that what? Love who? God and those who are called according to his purpose. He's trying to get you to see, don't be as concerned about the events and the pleasures and everything in this life. Because God can make that good, but he's telling you unequivocally, <laughs> Y'all know when I, I get to some words that I'll make up some stuff. I'll make up some, but you know what I'm talking about. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. That's right. It's a real word. I know it's a real word. He's telling us that I have something better for you. He said, don't worry about the trials. He says, and, and as a matter of fact, through your trials, I'm going to give you some perseverance. I'm going to give you some hope. I'm going to give you some character in it. I know what you're going through. I know you were in the pit. I know that when they brought you up out of the pit, you looked at your brothers to say, really? You're really going to go through with this? How many of you have ever been in a situation, maybe it's at work, maybe it's at home, maybe it was with a, a spouse, or you would just look at me and say, really? After all we've been through, after all, I, really, you are going to do this? And how many of us have actually seen people follow through? You really going to fire me? Don't worry. Everything belongs to God. 
And if you don't get anything from this point on, on this earth, God has a home eternal for you. Now, that's a, that's a hard spiritual principle. That's, that's not easy for most of us. Our text in Genesis, the 45th chapter, and I got to roll already. The Genesis, the 45th chapter, because we're going to get through this today. Genesis, 45th chapter, and we're going to look. I'm going to start with verse uh, number, uh, number one. Uh, and uh, this is during a time where, G, uh, where, where Joseph really first let his brothers know who he was after they came back, after they connected with him through God's providence. And this was 22 years later from the pit, the pit incident, 22 years. In verse number one of of chapter number 45, the Bible says, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, make everyone go out out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept, the Bible says, aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph, in verse number three, said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for for they were dismayed. They were confused in his presence. And Moses said to his, I mean, excuse me, and Joseph said to his brothers, he says, please. Come near to me. Come near to me. Can you imagine the scene? And, and you know, I, I, I've said this, I, and this is what I think about this scene all the time. You know, he was probably crying so hard you could not hear him. Have you ever had and seen a, a, a child uh, and even a grown folk, a grown person when, when they're going through a real trauma? You know, maybe they're going through a real trauma. They cry. And they can't, you, you can't hear what you're what you, They say, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Yeah, we've been there. It's funny now when you think about it, but, but it's not really funny during the time because you can't, you, you've been there. And then he says, and my father still live. And then in verse number uh, four, and Joseph said to his brothers, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph. Your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, I'm I'm Joseph, your brother. And then they, can you think of what they're thinking in their minds? Uh oh. He says, but now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent. Now, this, 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 is, the, this is what you came for. 
This is the encouragement. This is the spiritual principle. This is what you got to apply in every situation. I want you to think about it. I know that you've had some rough times. I know we're going through rough times right now, but I want you to understand something. I want you to know that God is still in control of everything, and I don't care what is happening. I don't care who left you. I don't care what job is there or not there. I don't care what happened. I want you to understand that God is still in control, and I want you to get this passage, and I can sit down. I'm not, but I could. In verse number five, he says, For God sent me before you to preserve You wanted to kill me, but God sent me before you to save your life. We wanted to kill Christ. You see, this is Christ in the, de- in the text. We wanted, they said, crucify him, crucify him. But Jesus says in Luke 19, 11, I am come and to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm trying to save you now, and you're rejecting me over and over again. I have come before you. I came before you to preserve life. For these two years of famine, he says in verse 6, has been in the land, and there are, he says, still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve as posterity, a posterity, to preserve an opportunity for you to have kids and grandchildren for our nation to exist if our nation doesn't exist uh, if you're not here our nation doesn't exist because Jacob's sons the 12 sons of Jacob made the 12 tribes of Israel and if the 12 tribes of Israel goes out of existence becomes extinct then Jesus the Christ never comes to earth, never comes for our salvation, never comes so that we may have eternal life. But God had promised, the Bible said, God had promised to Abraham way before Joseph, way before Jacob, he had promised, he said, in your seed, in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, in your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. But Joseph had to be sold into Egypt for this to happen. If he didn't stay in that pit, if he was not separated from his family, if he didn't go through all the things that he went through, then the Christ doesn't come. God, in verse 7, he says, sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So it was not you. It was not you. Although your evil hands were in it, you had uh, you you were doing what you were doing, and you just think about all the things that may have happened to you. See, you, we got to make an application here. Sometimes some things happen to us because we were in the wrong place by our own choosing, and God allowed us to be. But God is able to save. He 
he's not willing. The Bible says that any should perish, but all should come to repentance in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. He's not willing that any. He's not willing that you die and never go to heaven. God is, don't you know God does not want that? In verse number 8, he says, So now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made also me a father to Pharaoh. I am the senior advisor to Pharaoh. And Lord over all his house. That means over all the materials, all the treasury. Everything. God set me up so I could save you. Wait a minute now. How has God set you up? How has God set you up? How has God set you up? So so, so many times God has delivered so many of us from so many things, and we take it as if uh, we take it totally differently. We take it totally negative. I've been through so much in my life. Okay, good. Now, I'm not saying we want to go through things. I'm saying how have you used this to the glory of God? Nobody wants to go through these trials. Nobody wants to have these type of issues. But guess what? You are here right now listening to God's word. You've got the capability to change your life because you are in tune and cognizant of the great God of heaven. But in the process of being used by God, the point is you have to accept some wrong. You've got to learn to accept. It, this, and this principle goes throughout Scripture. And, and in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, in verse number 7, it, it talks about this, the same concept uh, of accepting the wrong. You know, they, they had in, the, in that particular context, you know, brothers going to uh, law against the other brothers and doing all that sort of thing. You know, we get into our, 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 ourselves. And the writer says, now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. He said, what about this principle that you may have forgotten? He said, what about this principle, which is a spiritual principle, which let's see who's going to employ it. Why do you not rather accept? wrong. It's difficult for us. We don't want to accept wrong. Even though God has accepted so much wrong in us. He accepted, didn't he? Hey, I don't care how good you think you are. God has accepted a lot of wrong. We have to learn it. Well, what does this look like in, in, in Genesis? What does this look like as we, we, we haste to a close? You see, um, that's in Genesis chapter number 37, uh, uh, we already talked about this. Chapter 37, I'm going to go forward there. Chapter 37, the, the love-hate relationship. The love-hate, the love-hate. I love you, I hate you. I love you, hate you. I love you, hate you. Uh, uh, you know, that's a recipe for disaster in, in family, in families. 
Learn to love people. Learn, learn to love people. Oh, yeah, learn to love people. I don't care where they are, what they did, what they're doing. God can help them. God can help them. You, you, you don't know that some people are so evil, you're right, and some people reject it, and some people you're going to have to stay away from. I understand that, but you can love them. The second thing is, is God intervenes in, in ways sometimes that we won't uh, even know or recognize at the time. I want you to realize that sometimes when we're going through something, we cannot see uh, how it's going to benefit us spiritually or how God was using us or how God was there um, while we're going through it. That's another spiritual level. That's another spiritual gift to understand while you're going through it. What is the spiritual lesson and benefit here? Yes, sir. That will save you so much time. <laughs> this concept, and, and I'm, I'm going to, we, we're not going to talk about this concept, but it's, it's called cruciform. Cruciform, it, it, it means it, it, the shape of Christ, the shape of the cross of Christ. It, it's the cruciform. And, and the concept is, is thinking about Christ in the situation. You see, Joseph said, in, particularly in chapter 50, in, in, in verses, uh, chapter 50, he says, Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. For us today, that is how we have to approach some things. It was meant and directed to me to hurt me, to talk about me, to disfellowship me, to disenfranchise me, to embarrass me. But God can use that disenfranchisement. He can use that embarrassment. He can use it, everything, to his glory. That's what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and around verse number 9. 1 Corinthians, 12th chapter, uh, Brother Bland, who's reading today? Brother Bland reading. I didn't give you anything to read, so I have to give you something to read. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and I, I, was it 1 Corinthians 12 and 9? I believe it is. Or is, this, is that right? What does it say? To another faith. Uh-huh. No, 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 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 12. That's right. Second Corinthians 12. We always got, we got to go through this once every sermon. So uh, we have to do that. Second Corinthians 12 and, and verse number nine. What did he say? Read. And he said to me, yes, my grace is sufficient. God for you. told Paul, my grace is sufficient for my strength, for my is made strength perfect is weakness. made perfect in your weakness. And then what did he say? Therefore, most gladly, Listen, I would rather boast. therefore, I most gladly what? Boast in my infirmities. I will boast in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. That the power of Christ may what? Rest, rest upon me. Upon me. And in verse 10, what did he therefore, say? Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. He said, therefore, infirmities. listen to this. I, I take, take pleasure in my infirmities, my in weaknesses, and my, my, my in reproaches. He says, in need. In persecutions. And in persecutions. In he says, in distresses. For and that's sake. why Joseph was crying. Joseph wept, my friends, five times in this whole text. He wept five times. And he was talking about, uh, you know, because he could feel, he could feel the emotions of, of what he had to go through. And I'm looking for the five times. I cannot see the five times, but that's all right. You read it five times. Joseph wept. 
Because of the distresses, because of the persecution, because of the needs. I was in prison. I was this. I was falsely accused. I was all this. But yet I am still standing. For when I am weak, then I am strong. As God's servant, it's not sometimes where you are right now. It's where you are willing to be and where God wants you to be. You see, we too much we look at where I am, and woe is me. Because sometimes we're in some pretty dark places. Many of us right now who haven't been able to come back and haven't been able to um, worship physically, I know many people are hurting. But look what the blessing that God has given us that we can still connect. We can still, I know it's not physical yet. I know there may be some things that, that are causing you not to be able to physically come. But we're still communicating and, we speak and God is still there. You go back 30 I, I, I guess 20 years, we wouldn't have this. What is the blessing in the situation that you're going through? What is the blessing in it? How are you going to use that to glorify God, to show and to give a testimony of God? That's what this lesson is about. That's what Joseph was so good at. He was, the Bible says, that everything he touched Everything he touched was blessed. Everything he went to, they try, he, it didn't matter what had happened before. He went to his prison and became the lead prisoner. <laughs> yeah, he, he was the one bringing the prisoners in and training them and, and then uh, interpreting their dreams. And eventually he got out of there. But it was a whole process. When he was in Potiphar's house, he said he had charge of all Potiphar's thing, and, 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 and Potiphar's wife even wanted him. And that became his problem. When are you going to really allow God to use you to the fullest? When are you going to stop separating your, your place as a child of God and your place as a secular um, in your work and your, your, your gifts? Why, why do you separate that? Why don't we use our influence? Across the board. There's so many other things that you can look at here. And I do have those scriptures for your notes, for your notes about him weeping about his brothers and over his brothers and over his family, and it's because it still hurts. Now, God didn't say it's not going to hurt. But God can transform you. For your notes is um, Genesis 42, 24, he wept. Genesis 43, 30, he wept. Genesis 45, 14, he wept. In the text that we had, he wept. Genesis 50 and 17, he wept. 
in Genesis 50 and 1. He wept. So we're not saying it's not going to hurt. And, and our Lord and Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, guess what he did? He, he wept. That's right. Jesus wept. And he weeps for us. The Bible says that he is in all points or was in all points tempted just as we are yet without sin. That's Hebrews 4 and 15. And also Hebrews 2 and 17. For he knows and understands the feelings of our infirmities. He understands when we are and feel incapable or incompetent for one reason or another, because we look at man's standard and we don't look at God's standard. Man will give you an IQ test. God's not interested in IQ tests. He's interested in your spiritual growth. Some of the most smartest people on this planet are not smart enough to obey God. He said, God sent me ahead of you to save your life. He says, we're going to save. It, he said, it was a great deliverance. And it was 22 years since he had seen him. Maybe, just maybe, God has sent this generation of believers to preserve the church. Maybe. All of what we've been going through for years or training for or the trials were for this moment in time that have never been experienced like it is now in church history. If you would have told me a year or two ago that we're going to have eight months where virtually we're not going to be able to come together physically to worship our God like we do. If you would have told me that then, I would have said, well, that's the end. But God, We got to trust God in every situation. He says, and we read it already, I come, I have been sent before you for a posterity so that we can continue on. Guess what? The same thing happens in Christ. The Bible says in Acts, the second chapter, and verse number 39, he says, for the promise is unto you and your children and to all those that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call You've got to get it together now because God is putting something in you and on you, not only for you, but for your children, for your grandchildren, for your children's children and grandchildren. He says, because through you, through the message, through your faith, he says, 
there are many who's going to come. But right now, you've got to accept some wrong, some discomfort, some vulnerability, some that you're going to have to accept something in order to get it done. God did not take away the pit from him. He didn't take away the ride in the desert down to Egypt with a band of Ishmaelites. He didn't take away the prison from him. He didn't take away all of the, uh, the hurt and the tears over the years. He did not take that away. God is not going to take away some of your discomfort. Some of your uh, disbeliefs. He's not going to do that. You've got to accept something. Now, are you willing to accept something for the preservation, first of all, of your soul? And second, for the preservation of the church? And third, so that you can be an example. What do you want to accept? For those of you outside the body of Christ, you see, we talked early about Joseph had to do this because God had promised through his seed, through the seed of Jacob, through those 12 tribes that he was going to bring the Christ. And the Christ was actually going to save the world. Absolutely. He did this and giving us an opportunity for the remission of sins, for the forgiveness of sins in the establishment of his spiritual body, which is the church. That's Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. All spiritual blessings are in Christ Jesus. We are added to his church when we hear and believe and obey the gospel of Christ. And what does that involve? Of course, hear, hearing the word, believing it. He tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's Hebrews 11 and 6. We must confess Jesus as Lord. And all that it is is saying, and believing that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. By virtue of coming, you have said to God that I am turning, or I have repented. I am going your way, God. I'm going to accept what I need to accept. And then... The last thing is, when you initially come to Christ, you come to God through baptism. You get a relationship in the waters of baptism. He makes you a spiritual child, and not just a child by creation. God loves all of us because we are his creation. But in Christ, we have all spiritual blessings, as Ephesians 1, 3, and we have the opportunity for eternal life in Christ. Baptism puts you in that realm. He says he washes away all of your sins and adds you to the spiritual body, the church. That is Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 47. Let's get out of our own way this morning. If you are subject to the Savior's invitation, if you understand some of the principles here that have been taught this morning, and you want to come to God, why don't you come forth? We're going to stand. We're going to sing. But those of you online, we need you to respond. We need you to respond now because the Bible tells us that the devil, that Satan wants to take away the word out of your heart unless you believe and be saved, and that is in Luke, the eighth chapter. If you are online, 
We need you to respond to minister at woodlawnpark.org. Minister at woodlawnpark.org. If you're here and you would like to respond to the Savior's invitation, why don't you come forth right now? Come on up right now as we stand and sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to, to know the sand of the righteous father we thank you for this day thank you for the worship and we just ask father that the words that have come from your voice from your holy and divine word will prick the hearts our hearts and the hearts of men and women everywhere we just appreciate and love father the opportunity we thank you again it's in jesus name we pray amen mm -hmm. let's give it up for brother assembly one more time please <clears throat> I was gonna make a joke about uh, about Lydia showing off with the uh, with the thing today, but uh, the assembly that was a very sobering lesson today, man. And I appreciate that. I almost walked out of here, man. That was that was serious. All right, um, I'm Brother Sanders. I'll be doing announcements for today. Um, first off, do we have any uh, visitors here today? Any visitors? Going once, going twice. Nobody? Okay. All right. Well, if you're watching online, please know that you're our honored guest. Yes. We've hoped that you've um, taken some away from this lesson today. All right. The Woodlawn Park, in, uh, in partnership with the Maryland Food Bank, will have a food distribution on Saturday, October 24th, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. If anyone is unable to attend the food distribution, events, proxy pickups are permitted. Uh, Monday through Saturday, we have a ladies' prayer call at 10 a.m. That number is 1-605-475-4800, and the dialing code is 822-601. Every Tuesday, we have a women's Bible study at 7 p.m. That number, 605 Four seven five four eight zero zero, dialing code eight two two six zero one. Every Tuesday night, at seven from seven p.m. to nine p.m., we have a men's Bible study, and that's led by Brother Bland. If you get a chance, please check that out. Um, every Wednesday here at the building at seven thirty p.m., we have a um, in-person and live stream Bible study. Uh, and that's being streamed on Facebook and YouTube. Each Saturday, you can pick up your communion supplies and drop off your offering here at the building from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. As always, please continue to pray for the sick and shut in. There are a lot of members who want to be here today but couldn't be, so please keep them in prayer. Um, these are all the announcements I have at this time. Thank you.
Before we have our closing song, which is gonna be led by Brother Kelvin Thomas, we want to make an announcement that um, I did receive notice last evening and uh, others have received notice uh, that uh, our brother, Brother Corey Williams uh, has passed. And Brother Corey Williams um, was a member and is a, uh, at, is a member and was a member at Edgewood uh, Church of Christ. And um, he, many of you may know him also formerly from uh, the Central Church of Christ and wanna pray for uh, his family and for the uh, Edgewood Church of Christ uh, congregation at the request of, of Brother John Wilkie. So we want to do that and in our closing prayer, whoever has the closing prayer, we include that. And we just thank you again for connecting with us. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, Wednesday evening, uh, for our Wednesday evening Bible study. And I think that comes on air at 7.15 uh, p.m. Let's have a closing song by Brother Thomas. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Brother Thomas here. Would you please stand with me this, with this morning's closing song, which we found on page 365. Page 365. We'll sing the first and last verse. If for the pride we have stripped after our labors are over, rest to our souls will be given. as we close let us all bow in a word of prayer to our God our Father who art in heaven through his son Jesus dear Heavenly Father we thank you in the name of your dear son Jesus for everything you've done and doing for us we thank you for the many blessings please dear Heavenly Father in the name of your dear son Jesus enable us to be able to accept the wrong and to grow from it spiritually so we can be better Christians to non-believers and believers alike we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to be with those who are streaming, to prick their hearts, to guide them to do your will and get baptized and then be in the body of Christ. We ask you specifically today, dear God, for Corey Williams, uh, his family, and that you bless the family and strengthen and encourage them, and also for the Edgewood Church Christ. Be with that congregation as they mourn the loss of their, their brother. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, in the humble name of your dear Son, Jesus, to put a guard at our mouths, guide our footsteps, enable us to rightly divide scripture. We ask these prayers and blessings in the name of your humble Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Life can be a confusing journey, and it doesn't always make sense. Family issues, substance abuse, fading health, and financial problems are just a few of the roadblocks you may encounter. Need answers? At Woodlawn Park Church of Christ, we want you to know that God loves you and has the answers you seek. No one here expects you or your life to be perfect. At Woodlawn Park, we're just like you. Real people with real problems who are seeking real solutions in Christ. We've been through some of the same struggles and understand that the pathway to your full potential is paved with love, support, and the encouragement of a dynamic community of believers. We know that within Challenges Lab, the opportunity to move mountains in our lives and in our community. We believe that God has a purpose for you, and our goal is to help you achieve it. At Woodlawn Park, we're creating a new brand of believers, one that beats the odds when there isn't a chance, one that succeeds when the world says we can, one that truly cares about the abandoned and lost, one that has faith in God's power no matter the cost. If you're wondering what your purpose is in life, if you're looking for the next step, join us. Let us meet you where you are, teach, encourage, and motivate you to allow God to enhance your life so that you can transform the world. When we reach that city of a new Jerusalem, well, we're going to sing, oh, sing, oh, by and by, oh, now our ransom singer will together lift that hymn. Well, we're going to sing, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I can go out and sing, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, when we get
anybody has a reason to sing, we do. Oh, we do. If anybody has a reason to sing, we do. Yes, we do sing. Come on and praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody, if anybody has a reason to sing, we do. Yes, we do sing. We do. If anybody has a reason to sing, say we do. Yes, we do sing. Go on and praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody, if anybody has a reason to praise, yeah, I know we do. Yes, we do say we do. If anybody, if anybody has a reason to praise, we do. Yes, we do say Come on and praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. And if anybody, if anybody, let's just pray. Send a message to bring. We do. Yes, we do. Sing we do. If anybody has a message to bring, I know that we do. Yes, we do. Sing we do. Come on, praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. 